Hey, bonus error, good evening. It's like <clears throat> 7.20 or something like that. Uh, it's super impromptu web dev stream this evening. I wanted to finish this ribbon tracker because it has been vexing me all week. Uh, I took the advice of many members of my chat and it is no longer just a server side thing. It's actually all done client side. They're very smart, they're very wise. Let me show you what we've got. Uh, browser. It looks like this now, which is, I think, empirically much better. Uh, it's scalable, kind of. That's one of the things we want to work on today. Uh, you can do query parameters to filter. Uh, when you click on ribbons, they show up. You can check them off and they get marked as done. Uh, it currently resets to the first one in the list, which is something I gotta fix. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the long and short of it. Uh, so I'm just gonna get to it, I think. Um, first things first is going to be, I think, fixing the part where it resets, and then we can look at styling. Though styling is very important. Uh, so, to that end, I have completely overhauled all the JavaScript because I was able to focus much, much better off stream, uh, and it's just, it works way better now. So in terms of best practices, I really wanted to highlight that even though I'm not using TypeScript, you can actually define type defs in vanilla JavaScript, and it will give your IDE a really good sense of what things are doing what. So like we have a config object here, uh, which is what the query parameters feed into. And then later I specified that there is a function that consumes a config. Where's my, yeah, this one right here for drawing the grid. And so when I talk about my config object, it doesn't just think it's of type any, it actually knows exactly what it is. It's like we know that config is here and we know what a gen is. It's a list of numbers and we can do all sorts of good operations on them with IntelliSense which is very, very handy. Uh, so there's that, that's something to consider. And vanilla JavaScript can do this. TypeScript is better about it, but you certainly don't need TypeScript. Uh, that's just the way it is around here. <clears throat> so let's get to, to work. The, the reason it's resetting is because I have it redraw the grid every time you update the, the status of the thing. Uh, and in there, I have all this filtering, ribbons by generation, by game, and then by name, and uh, then I tell it to sort them and everything, and display the ribbon, which I don't want it to do. Uh, let's, so let's move this, I think. Let's move all the filtering into the part where we get information by query parameters, I think. So, like, all of this can go up to here, I think. Uh, and then we can do function get. Like such. To return a blank array and then we can do helpful js docs where we can do returns type ribbon like that we'll return the sorted list of ribbons and it will take in a config and we can specify that as ram. That's going to be a type config. And just pop that in here. Like such. And we just return. ribbons so we have that and what do I want to do with it um current ribbon 
this is going to now consume ribbons. Should be fine there. <clears throat> and then here it would be draw the grid. That's yeah, fine. And instead of get query parameters, we have to nest that in yet another function. It would be. Like that. Like such. And then we want to do our... going to do if sorted ribbons length is greater than zero and uh, current ribbon undefined or that. <clears throat> there we go. So what that's going to do is if uh, we don't have a currently selected ribbon, uh, and either, or rather, if, the, if we have a list of sorted ribbons and we don't have one that's currently selected, or the one that's currently selected is no longer in the list, we uh, display the first one in that list. So we should be good to go there. Let's test that, make sure this works before I move on too much further. For my browser... Hit my trusty refresh button. Alright, looks good. Um, picks the first one. I'm going to pick one later in the list. Check it off. It doesn't redraw the whole thing. Pretty good. Okay. I'm going to uncheck it and it will become unselected again. Seems good. Seems correct. You like that? Alright, back, uh, back to VS Code. So that's good. That works. Um... What else do I need to do from a code side of things? Oh yeah, I wanted to make it display what games it was in. And optionally, I guess, also the title. I also, like, formatted my uh, data set really nicely. Like, really nicely. Um, I have a list of games. And they say what their, like, common descriptors for them are. We have, like, a fixed UUID. And then what generation the game is. And then all the ribbons say what games you can get them in. Uh, if I go to, like, a ribbon... And so that way you can figure out what generations and what games each ribbon belongs to. So you can filter your set by games or generation, or even just the name of the ribbon, if you wanted to only have to collect a certain subset of ribbons, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, so... What do I want to do here? I literally forgot what I said I was wanted to do oh yeah get to display what what the games it's in it are what games it is in rather so we have available in uh, we have a span here and so i think what we're going to do is in page generator here we are going to in display ribbon Document dot get elements by ID. Uh, blank it out. Uh, and then we are going to do 
for of our game in current ribbon dot games games oh hold on I can type def this too uh, how did I do that over here it was like check this shit out <clears throat> I can use my js doc knowledge to specify that this is a type of ribbon or this is a ribbon so now it knows if this isn't just some random variable this is a ribbon it will have ribbon properties so my intellisense can help me prevent me from making errors uh currently selected ribbon and so now back over here it now knows that games is an array of games which is pretty cool. And I have to remember if it's in or of, it's of, in is properties, of is iterating over the array. Like such, uh, we're gonna do uh, const span equals create element, uh, span, Span dot like such. And we're going to do oh. Think that'll work so we iterate over every game that the ribbon can be collected in we create a new span for it we display the text as the shorthand which in this case would be like it's available in ruby sapphire or ruby sapphire and emeralds would be rse uh the it gets assigned the id as a class because in my css i define colors for every game so i think that should work so now let's go back to browser Where'd browser go? Browser. Refresh. Hey, nice. Kind of. It's a little hard to read. But there we, there we go. Available in uh, RSE. Can you get this game, this one in Fire, Fire Red Leaf Green? I think you actually can. This is like the only ribbon you can get in Fire Red Leaf Green. Which is cool. It's like Diamond Pearl Platinum, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. I gotta make this a little more readable, I think. I'm not sure how. Maybe just increase the uh, font weight. I'm not sure. But it works. Cool. Um, and it clears out properly. You can get this ribbon in like every game. Pretty cool. Um, maybe I should put a space between them. I'm not sure. Kind of cool though. Kind of looks cool. Um, much to think about. Much to think about. <clears throat> Alright, back to VS Code. And then, like, obviously, I gotta do a lot of formatting for this box at the bottom. This is, like, far from what I expect it to look like at the end. Um, but that's good. I, that's one of the things I wanted. Actually, it might just be formatting time. Which is gonna take me back now to my browser. Let's, let's just jump straight into formatting. Because in my browser, I can just mess with the CSS directly and then decide how I want to translate that over to the actual CSS file. Instead of, like, making a change and refreshing. Etc. Etc. So one thing I definitely want is to have this scalable because this is going to be a browser source. So I think I need to define like most things in terms of what's called an EM because that drives it based on font weight. And at the very root, I have my font weight uh, deriving from the HTML thing here. Uh, Vmin, which you can see here, uh, is a size unit that is based on the minimum viewport dimension. So in this case, it would be width. I think I actually want to change this to VMAX. So not to be confused with the Pokemon VMAX cards. Yeah, okay. So like things get much bigger. 
and it kind of scales more nicely. Maybe I don't want three. Maybe three is too much, but like two, two V Max might be cool. That probably looks good. I think something like that. And then if I uh, so for my next trick, then like if I do my container here, instead of telling it to always be forty pixels, I can tell it to be like two E M. 2EM, something like that, and it should scale. Maybe I'm full of it. What am I doing wrong here? That should work. Not sure why that doesn't work. Because I was messing around with this earlier uh, off, off stream. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so like these are EM size, so you can see that they like kind of scale with with things. Though I have a minimum size on them also. Uh, let's consult what I was doing earlier. Oh, one other thing I definitely want to do is give these things a drop shadow. So like real quick, let me inspect. Let's change the background color to black. And then I want to give every ribbon grid cell here a drop shadow. So I'm going to do a filter, drop, shadow, and be like 0, 0, 0. Or it'd be like 0, 0, 5px. White. I don't think I need the commas. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah, I think that's kind of what I want. Um, let's let's put that out there and see how that looks. Uh, so let's see, what changes did I just make? I wanted to do... Uh, in my CSS. Uh, this is going to be the max, I think. And then my uh, grid cells here are going to have a filter. Drop shadow. Zero, zero, five px white. Cool. Uh, so now if I go over here and refresh, that should work. That should look good. Oh, I think we said three was too much. Let's do two. There we go. Looks good if you if you blow it way up. Uh, it, it scales nicely. The font gets bigger. I think I want VMAX. I'm not sure if I want VMIN or VMAX. Uh, let me see what VMIN looks like again. Maybe I want VMIN, I'm not sure. I don't know. That's easy enough to change. Point is, I need to scale everything off of an EM instead of a pixel. Uh, which should be totally doable. But now if I... I'm going to give you guys a real treat. I'm going to switch over to my actual streaming setup for later this week. And I need to do this. Uh, if I just hide and refresh this, will it... Refresh... How do I refresh this? There we go. Cool. Okay, that looks not bad. Um, now it's a little too big, but that's a all right problem to have. Scale it down a little bit more. Maybe the white drop shadow is a little too no, uh, too bold. I'm not sure. And I still have to like fix all the text at the bottom and everything. That's like not what I want it to look like. It'll probably be sans serif and everything. But also it's just like not formatted properly. Oh yeah, I also just noticed it's like truncating a ton. That's weird. Alright, back to my browser. Uh...
go. Why is it truncating so much? That's weird. It shouldn't. That's okay. We'll figure it out. Okay. So now... My... What do I want to do here? I want... To make sure this is structured nicely. We have our container... Actually, I guess, yeah, let me let me hop back to my browser. So what do I want to do here? We've got this... Uh, first of all, I want to get rid of the, the margins on the H3. None of that. I mean, oops. Immediately condenses things a little bit more nicely, which is good. Uh, we have our stack here. We've got this thing. Uh, this is going to have a height of 3EM, I think, something like that. And then we can do this container. We can get rid of that. We can do uh, aspect ratio 1 over 1. And we can do... Hundred percent, which I think should make it scale. I'm full of shit. It doesn't. Why? Why not? Oh, because it's not in the. Oops. Hold on. Hold on. We have our row, has everything in it. So if I make my row have a height instead of um, this thing, 3 EM, let's try that. Then I can give this a element ID. There we go. That's more in line with what I had in mind. So we'll make this a, uh, have its own ID. That's fine. And this guy... I want padding. But I don't want it to overflow like it currently is. Like, it's a little bit taller than the, the whole row. Why? If I get rid of padding, does that help? It does, but... If I get rid of height and put padding back in, we're good? Okay, so that's what I want to do. Okay. And that scales? Yes, it does. Okay, that's good. Oh, hey, Lua. Uh, th Hello, hi. Um, this music is from uh, my favorite anime, Lupin the Third. This is a mixtape by... Oh, God, what's the guy's name on YouTube? It's like a compilation of a bunch of albums. The name of the mixtape is, With All Due Respect, You're Insane, which is pretty good. How's it going, Lua? Thanks for stopping by. I've been talking to myself for quite a bit here, um, so it's nice to have a companion, but you're under no obligation to continue talking to me. Uh, so I think we're good on that front. Let me let me commit what I just did to CSS. Boop, 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 boop. What are you up to this evening? Surely you've got some exciting exploits. You're never a dull moment when you're Lua Lucky. Uh, so let's see, my... Uh, this thing... 
It's going to be... None of that. We're going to have aspect ratio 1 over 1. I'm waiting for a delivery that said they would be between 3 to 5 p.m. and it's almost 5 and I'm biting my nails. That is an unfortunate habit. You definitely shouldn't do that, but I totally understand. I love when I get estimates that are like, it'll get there by 9 p.m. And you're like, huh, what, like the UPS driver is going to be out at 9 p.m.? But then they are. Uh, which is why they need strong contracts for their union, which they just won. Because the Teamsters got a huge win. Uh, so they definitely deserve it. I'm always surprised when I get like a delivery from Amazon or UPS or whatever. Super, super late, because I typically don't think of them coming around. Figuratively, okay, much better. You're not like on there, like just chomping. That's good. Uh, okay, so we did that. We have our V min or V max up there. 11 p.m. That's insane. That is completely fucked. Because that's like a person doing it for you. That just shouldn't be how it is. Uh, okay, so then we have our row here. I think I can do... this instead and this one doesn't need an ID I think and then styles because I don't think I have anything with that I don't know why I gave that an ID Something like that, I think. I think that's what I want. Uh, let me check my browser real quick what I was doing here. Uh, uh, refresh, what happens? Oh, that's no good. Oh, right, and I also need to do... A little bit better. Uh, so now it looks like this. We have our title... We have what games it's available in, our forced in their checkbox, which I still don't really know how I want to format, but I've got time to figure that out. The games it's available in that are color-coded, which I need to make more readable. I'll bold these, I think, probably. Uh, so, like, if I do uh, something like... That's a little bit better. Maybe they need a drop shadow. Um, can I do that for text? What if I just do it like that? I think I need to specify more. Uh, one, one, something like that. X, Y. This is just not the right syntax, right? Uh, Maybe a little bit better? I don't know. A lot of ways to skin a cat in this regard. 
yeah, so like... Also, I got... <clears throat> I gotta fix this. That's not how you would display the little funny E. Maybe that's good. I don't know. We'll think about it. Um... Sure, that's a cool auto auto fill setting. Let's see what that does. I don't like the serifs on this. Sure, I guess. But now stuff doesn't fit super great. Oh yeah, that's gonna be like not readable at all if I really shrink it down. Hmm. So let's make a CSS class for this and then we can figure it out. Go to our thing here. Webbed dev, you're so right. You're so right. Uh, what was where was I going? Available in it's gonna be class like that. So now if I go to my browser, I want to learn to code stream browser overlays, but maybe I can just commission you instead. Uh, I'd be really slow about it because I have no shorter than four ongoing projects uh this being one of them and this is almost done but this is a in service of a larger larger streaming project that i have that's going to last like all of october sorry all of august why did i say october that's strange um is that not... oh oops um But, I mean, if you're not in, like, a huge rush, I'd be happy to do it. Or I'd be happy to... Actually, Lua, you know what I'd be happy to do? Is I'd be, I'd be happy to do a co-working stream with you where I get you to do it, but you can pick my brain for as much as you need. Like, I will literally just sit there and you can ask me any question or, or things like that. But I'm guessing the constraint is that you don't have time. Not that you don't want to learn or don't feel like you have the skills. But I feel like that's a collab opportunity waiting to happen. Up to you, of course. Uh, let's see. So let's see. We want to do class for the containing div. 
like such. Where's the back end for that too? So now back in the browser. You can't even start. That's quitter talk. That's not the Lua Lucky that I know. Okay, that's a bit smaller. Um, we wanted to make the box that these are in a little bit bigger. <laughs> these have like some kind of that's a funny optical illusion. These feel like these are lower because of the drop shadow. I actually don't like the drop shadow. That's got to go away. Or it's got to be on everything. What if I put that on everything, actually? What happens then? How unreadable does this become? Very unreadable. Alright, fine. That goes away. Let me rephrase. I like the knowledge to ask you a single informed question. Okay, that's, I guess, fair. That's fair. Uh, well, we could start with, like, one of the ones you got and work backwards, I guess. I don't know. I, I'm happy to workshop, a like, a lecture series with you or something like that. I feel like that's where I excel, kind of. But also, I just want to do more collabs with you because you're funny. And I feel like I, get, I often have a good time when I talk to you, so. That's just me being selfish. I'd be down. Good. Good, good, good. Let's do some padding. Honestly, this like almost is good enough for government work already, which is good because I kind of didn't want this to be a super long stream because there's a cool Kala event happening in a little bit. Get a load of this! Ooh, who's doing that? Vor2am. Excellent username that I actually remember because I remember making the exact same joke where I say Vor2am. Uh, previously. I don't remember why I remember the username, or where you're from, but I recognize it. As soon as this fucking construction is finished, the delivery is related. Have I considered white text for the red box? Um, maybe. I haven't really considered colors too, too much. Um, that's gonna be, like, the final step, I guess. And that's gonna be tuned because I gotta figure out what looks good here. Hold on, let me refresh this. Oh, that's no good. That's, like, really squished. That's what happens when you pick a ribbon that's in every game, I guess. Um, and the drop shadow is a bit much still, also. Um, so I hadn't considered white. It might be good. But also, I gotta, like... Maybe I just have to always have this be a little bit wider. Like, if I do... Um, with... 400? Does that look okay? Maybe I don't display what games it's available in because that doesn't actually matter. I thought it would be cool, but for ones that are in every single game, like specifically the effort ribbon, uh, that might be a bit maybe much. And I don't see a really good way to truncate that. Well, I guess actually if I put a space in between each game, it'll just truncate. It's too much effort. Yeah, the effort ribbon is the one you get for having uh, 255, 255, 4 IVs, 5, 10 total. EVs, sorry. Like, your guy's fully trained. Um, so you can just get it in every game, because that's been a concept forever. Uh, did you know that it, I'm, I'm currently displaying a filtered subset here for my overlay, because I've only got games since Gen 6. Uh, did you know that if you were to try and do a real Ribbon Master run for Pokemon, there are 115 ribbons total? Uh, and you'd have to start in Pokemon Coliseum for the GameCube, because there's a ribbon in that game as well that you can only get there. Therefore, the list of Pokemon that can get every single ribbon, therefore, is very, 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 very short. It's like... Snorlax? And Altaria? It's two. And maybe Dragonite? Dragonite, I think, is on the list. And that's like it, because it has to be a Pokemon that's been around since Gen 3, didn't miss... No, it's not Dragonite, sorry. Uh, it's got to be a Pokemon that has been around since Gen 3 uh, to get these ribbons, hasn't been cut in Gen 8 or 9, 
and is in Pokemon Legends Arceus, because there's a ribbon in that game, even though that game doesn't have ribbons, you can still get a secret one that you only find out about when you transfer them back to a Gen 9 game. So, you have to have a Pokemon that's been everywhere. So it's like, literally just like Snorlax and I think Altaria, or like the two. Maybe, I think Scyther. Scyther counts. You can get a Scyther with every ribbon. But I'm not doing any of that, so it doesn't matter. I'm just doing since Gen 6. Uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, hold on, let me put this back to the size it was. Nice and squished up like that. Um, let me... Like, what I really want is the container that has... Actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, golly. My mistake. I hit Control-S reflexively while I had a stream element selected. I don't know what that did. I guess stretch? That's funny. In my page generator here in... Let's go back to here. Also, hi, Zvi, how are you doing? I really enjoyed your Trespasser stream yesterday. It was a hoot and a holler. Not just one or the other, but in fact, both. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. Uh, that game, dude, I'm, I'm peachy keen, actually. Like, I feel way more invigorated about this. Uh, I followed you and Bond's advice, and it's completely done via the front end now. There's no back end server. I really should have done my due diligence with this before I, like, just jumped right in. Uh, turns out a couple of things. One, uh, no power outages yet, but we're going to get one for sure now that you mentioned it. Uh, so, I see one, uh, you are correct. You can right click on a browser source in OBS and click on inspect or uh, interact rather and it'll make a little pop-up for you that's the same browser uh, that you can then click on which I didn't know about I thought you just wouldn't be able to click on them or if you could you'd have to like click on the actual like preview viewport which would be unwieldy but you can so that's good I don't need to make a control panel for that and two I thought I was going to need a back end because I thought I was going to need to write my status of these things to a file like a persistent file storage but it turns out that the browser in OBS supports local storage, which for those who don't know is kind of like a cookie system. Uh, it's a way of saving arbitrary data in a key value pair in a browser. Uh, kind of like what cookies do. It's a little bit more open-ended than cookies. So I'm literally just saving the data about every ribbon as a local store key pair. Uh, and you can just get it and it persists across boots of the, uh, the browser, it seems like, which is very cool. So I don't need a backend to persist my file or anything like that which is really really neato uh and the oh and the third thing i thought i was going to need to have a back end so i could like do filtering but i actually have uh query parameters for all of that and you can just pass those in even as part of the file url so you can specify like what games what generations and what specific ribbons you're actually hunting for uh so all the configuration is done via query parameter and we're all set there and i was going over this at the start of the stream uh, probably to no one, because I think I just jumped right in re really, really fast. I also went through and gave all of my classes and functions uh, type defs, because it helps my IntelliSense know what things are. Instead of just having var any, I can specify that, like, this is a config. It has these three properties, uh, things like that. I have my list of ribbon data and my list of games. My games say what names they are and what gen they're from, and my ribbons say what games they're in. And so everything is strongly typed, even though I'm not using TypeScript, and it all just works. I strongly recommend stubbing out your type definitions in JavaScript, even if you're just doing browser stuff. It really helps a lot. Because you'll do something like type in, you know, ribbon.game, and you'll try and access it like an array, and it'll it'll just not work. You'll get undefined. And you'll be like, why the fuck? And it's because the property is named games, plural, and you didn't know that. Or you, you did know that, but IntelliSense didn't help you there. But when you do stuff like this, uh, as long as it knows that it's type ribbon, which you can specify by doing things like this, it'll prompt you with like types that are actually relevant for the JavaScript. So even though JavaScript is not a typed language, uh, your IDE can often make it a typed language, which is very, very helpful. Uh, so where was I? What was I doing? Uh, oh yeah, I was putting a space between my spans, so I wanted to see if that would let it truncate if I go now back to here. Or I'll wrap, rather. Um, if I do my ribbon tracker... Refresh. 
Well, kind of. It lets it wrap, but not in a good way. Um, that's unlucky. Yeah, because then if I, like, go to, like, a different ribbon that's not in every game, it looks way better. Like, this is more in line with what I had in mind. Like, pretty much exactly this. A little bit of padding for the description text. And I think I wanted to do, like, a progress bar. Uh, for, like, how many of the filtered set you currently have. Um, so I gotta dwell on that. I gotta think about how I wanna... Oh, yeah, that's kind of ugly. Maybe we just don't need that subtitle. I thought it would be cool, but I think maybe probably just don't need it. Or, like, if it doesn't fit, it should just be, like... I don't know. I'll think about it, but I do want to add a progress bar. So let's actually split our focus and just do that, because I kind of want to <clears throat> see if I can just bang that out real quick. Um, so that would be back in VS Code. I could have it on its own row, but the problem is when... I wanted it to, like, match the icon, but there's just no way. There's no feasible way to do that. I'll think about how I want that to look. That's a stylistic decision I gotta think about. Let's do a progress bar. Um, so let's see, we've got our grid. Star. I think I have, like, a perfect idea on how to do this. That's a 19 problem. Yeah, yeah, like, that's something I can work on tomorrow. I'm planning to start this streaming series, by the way, Sunday. Um, because I think that would be fun. Actually, let me give you a, a real quick sneak peek of what's to come. Because I just can't help myself here. Check this shit out. <clears throat> I actually went ahead and did it. Did you know it's really easy to mod your 3DS? Uh, not that this one's modified in any way, of course. Uh, I'm just magically getting video out over USB cable by Nintendo's own good graces. Uh, yeah, I mean, nice stock theme. It's pink. Eyes V. This is so my jam. I saw this theme and I was like, I would never need another one in my entire life. Because it's gorgeous. It's the exact right color pink. Yeah, this is over USB. Um, I have a USB-C cable plugged in right next to my power adapter for my, my 3DS. That was a fun DIY project. But I've got all my Pokemon games on here. Uh, I've got Pokemon X, which I'll be ready to launch starting... Oh, I'm actually going to start with Alpha Sapphire. But yeah, we got all that. Um, so that's what you can look forward to on Sunday. This was a fun hardware mod to do. I'm not super thrilled with how I did with the dremeling to get it all in there, but, uh, you know, that's how it is sometimes. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to streaming off of this thing. I've got my... The last couple of Pokemon games I was able to get off the eShop before it went down. Uh, I've got my Pokemon Bank and Pokemon Transporter all set up so I can move my guys through my generations. And yeah, it, it should be a fun time. So I'll leave that there for now. Uh, back to the task at hand, though. Uh, progress bar. Like such. Something like that. So we're going to have our progress bar. Inside of it, there's going to be the text, uh, which says it's going to be like, you know, 
1 out of 24. Uh, that's not true. There's not only install services. There are DIY. I know because I did it myself. Uh, you can just buy the chip from somebody, or the board, and then they say, good luck, champ. And you just have to pray that your ECE degree still holds up over a decade later, and you just know how to do this stuff, and it all works out. In this case, it was a, a gamble that I was willing to take, and it paid off because I was right. But you can't absolutely do it yourself. I was far too impatient to send one of these off to somebody else and wait on a backlog. Uh, yeah, sure. You absolutely may do that. Uh, okay, so we've got our progress bar. Inside of there's going to be text, and it's going to be like, you know, 0 out of z uh, 24. And we're going to have a fill bar. Uh, and so we're going to set up some styles right now. Let's go to the middle here. Not, not the very end, because that's where all my colors are. we have absolute and then something like that now, if I go to my browser, what does this look like? Okay, not quite what I had in mind, but let's find out why. Cool. So now if I do... Ooh, not quite. Uh, height. Auto? Why is 100% doing that? Huh? Why is it not doing 100% of the parent? Huh? It's because it's absolute, I guess? That's why, right? Okay. What's the way to do this? What's the way to do this? Also, I think this needs to be like that. Um, what's the way to do this? Because it needs to be absolute position so that you can have... The text not maybe it doesn't. Maybe this one doesn't need to be absolute. No, I guess it does. Uh, but this is basically what I was thinking. And then I just need to figure out how to get the text on top of it. Because then you can do like, you know, 100%. Sorry. 100%. Like that. And it'll fill up. And so then you can just adjust the width of this thing via JavaScript based on how many ribbons there are. Uh, so let's forget the text for now, and let's just focus on this guy. So that's our progress bar fill, height 100%, uh, position is not absolute, we can not worry about that for now. Uh, VS Code, let's just focus on getting this thing to fill properly. In my page generator here, I'm going to say on the when we draw our grid We have a tracker for how many we've completed. Every time we find one that we've completed, we do plus plus. Then what we're going to do at the very end here is... Uh,
going to be uh, completed divided by Oh, hold on, I need to specify... Yeah, okay. I think that does it. Now if I go back to my browser... Clearly not, something is wrong. Because this should have some guys. Oh, that's right. It needs to not be pixels, it needs to be percent. And it needs to be times 100. Like now I say I've done this. Oh, uh, my progress bar fill. Wait, what happened here? Oh, oops. There we go. Behold. My progress bar, it works. Uh, kind of. It is now past five, and I called the delivery company. Of course, they are closed. But even better, their answering machine was fucked up. Tell me all about it. I love fucked up answering machines. Wow. Wow. Yeah, this works. So I think that's, like, probably where I'm going to call it for today, because there's a cool event happening on another channel that I want to direct you all towards, and I'm excited about watching also. Um... Yeah, okay, it looks like that's good to go. But Lua, I want to hear about the fucked up answering machine first. This is very important. What's Kawa doing? Uh, my good friend uh, Pia of Kawa Entertainment fame is doing a brand new model debut, and it looks like it's got, like, all the bells and whistles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a cool event for me. One of my friends is getting a, a fancy new model, and she's very happy about it. So, I am excited for her. Now, uh, you may... Have your own decisions about whether that's cool or not, but to me, that's cool. So, I want to go there and uh, watch, personally. Let's see, how far along is she in this? Has she, like, actually just shown off the whole model? Okay, yeah, cool. We're not doing any of that how alive, 45-minute, drawn-out uh, outfit reveal crap. Okay, um, so yeah, Lua, answering machine, hurry up. I need to know, how fucked up was this answering machine? In what way was it fucked up? I want to go there. Yes. Answering machine, tell me. Lua, you're on the spot. You have to tell me. How fucked up was the answering machine? I'm not letting anybody go until we find out how fucked up the answering machine was. You're not doing the answering machine thing. Just raid. Man, that sucks. Lua Lucky hates fun. Why does this not work? The bit has been cancelled. Wait, wait, hold on. Why is this not working? Interact. Oh, it is working. I'm dumb. Cool. Thumbs tight. You're typing. You're on your phone? You're typing with your thumbs? Oh, my God. Fine. You know what? You know what? Stream canceled. Time to raid. Raid. Well, I appreciate the dedication. I really do. Uh, Piapi Ufo. Waiting for delivery. I thought you were at home. Like, you could just be on your laptop or even your desktop and still be waiting for delivery. Whatever. You're going to tell me later and then I'm going to share it on stream or you're going to share it on stream. I need to know what variety of fucked up the answering machine is. My mind's going to wander otherwise. Anyway, uh, go tell Pia how cute she looks in her brand new outfit. It's a real, real glow up. Not that she wasn't cute before. Um... Pretty much, yeah. Look forward to my Ribbon Master playthrough 
starting on Sunday. This thing will be dressed to the nines by then. Looks, It'll look completely good and be perfect. And I'll have everything done by then, I promise. Uh, thank you to Isby and Bon Bombs for giving me good advice on not trying to make a server-side application for this. And thank you, everybody else, for coming by and chatting with me. I appreciate it, as always. I've been your skeletal host, uh, Skeleton. And I wish you a bonus era and good night. Thank you.